doing it. And well, remember he had a handout that I asked right. him, we should see that because we haven't right. seen it. And I thought that thing said updated master plan. That could have happened a long time ago. Uh, the master, you're talking about the Village Hill. Plan. Right, the one that showed, you know, those, right, with the reason Wright Builders, we had a technical review meeting on Tuesday morning. And Wright Builders was there talking about six new units that were on the hospital. And those, I don't know if they were on the master plan, but he had this handout that showed. Yeah, I mean, I saw that for oh, 10 seconds. Oh, is that seconds, like the bundle it. It's been a no, long no, time since I've one. seen the big, the, the, the latest picture. I thought that updated master plan was just that oh, sliver. It was part of an RFQ that was distributed, and they showed them that little chunk of the master plan. Well, let's ask them tonight, because yeah. Master Belt is going to be here tonight. Yeah. 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 As far as I know, the they, 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 they have not the north part of the campus there, they haven't figured okay. out what's going to happen. That's all, that's all sort of theoretical. Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. PVPC is uh, uh, Devin, who's not here. Edlu? Um, again, Edlu hasn't met um, actually quite a while as Claire was leaving and Angela resigned. The committee kind of, you know, didn't meet for a while. Do you guys meet only when necessary? No, once a month. Okay. Yeah. I think the last business we did was some of the stuff that the planning board did. Was what? Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that the planning board did. King Street. Um, oh, that's right. You guys had a street. Yeah. But we have met for a while. I'm so sorry. Owen is going to be on the business. He was on the Edward. Oh, he had been. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Because don't they all change after the first year? He, well, just, like, he took she, Angela's place on Edward. Yeah, I think he went came to one meeting. Yeah, and then, we, so. then as Claire left, we have kept being canceled. Okay, Maybe I'll just go across all and check on and see how Wayne's doing. And either we'll figure out what we're going to do. Alright. Do you guys know how to get the menu back to work? <laughs> what is Anybody? This? What do you want to show? Well, if the phone comes in here, if the phone field comes in here, <laughs> instead of us moving back to there, then we can project here. Except we either physically have to turn the thing over or there's a menu button that just reverses the image. And I can't seem to get that to work. Yeah, but that's what we're going to do. I see, I think, it on there, but it won't. Um, and for some reason, this menu thing is not working. Who else is on it? I don't know. I just saw something on Facebook that he said that that's going to be one of those committees. It just stuck in my head. Because it was Jean, Paul, Angela. It was a charter review committee meeting. Um, it's over. It's everybody's cleared out. I was there taping earlier. So. Yeah. Yeah, they were meeting all week again. Um. So the, the last item, which we can make. This is really just, I don't know if anybody's thought about moving forward on zoning changes. Moving forward on zoning changes. Moving forward on zoning changes. From commercial to residential. I think back in late fall, you guys you know, put a priority on the next step being tackling that residential zone. So Wayne's taking five, ten more minutes, and then we can move in. And then um, if for any reason they go to 745 and they're not done, mass development's here, and we'll just do mass development first. Um, it's 
this room is not big enough for that. Mass development's only two people. Well, maybe one or two members. I don't think so. That's I can see. So are they going to have to show any Well, who's moving down that space as well? Who's going there? What is Well, Conscom is doing floors right now, so everybody like Wayne and Marie, Hershey Design, they're all in there with Conscom. Right. So if they finish up, we're just going to go into that room because okay. they're all set up. And they're already but, are they think they're going to be able to vote or are they just going to continue? Wayne said five or ten minutes, hopefully, but you know. Yeah, but he also said seven minutes. So the 15 minutes that I've done with the mass development here, we'll see if there's anything out. As far as I know, there's only the two people from mass development. Would you want to do the, um, talk about mapping out the calendar for Sunday? Um, oh, yeah. So so next, our next meeting is whatever, two weeks from today, 26th. Yeah. And we have um, Linda Manor on there, which, um, DPW, have they gone to DPW or are you going to be voting that night? Um, they will probably not have a stormwater permit by that time, but we thought to go ahead and put it on the schedule anyway so we could get the neighborhood comments out, knowing that it will probably be continued anyway, and then all the comments can be on the table so they could go back and work on any plan changes they need to make. So, you know, that's the only project, probably, I would say, two hours max. I mean, mm. it, it, knowing it will be likely to be continued. And then the first meeting in March, is that Glendale Road? Do we have any uh, word indication? February, yes. Oh, yeah, they, the are in February. they are coming back. What's and the date on that meeting? February 9th. Yeah, oh, that's the uh, way. Okay. Glendale Road. Actually, February 9th, I may be away too. I'm going to be away too. What happens? There's three of us gone out of eight. Las Vegas, LA, uh, San Jose, and San Francisco. If everything works out. Palo Alto. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'd rather not do it. You know the way to So, can you do it with five? It's, not a, special, it's a special permit, though. It is a special permit. And Andrew can't. Can Andrew vote? He can't vote on the subdivision, but he can vote on a special permit. So, and the subdivision only requires a um, majority of the quorum present. So it's, it could be as little as three. <laughs> so that <laughs> night, if, if if Glendale Road does come through, Franny, do you want to meet the resident? Is the sub vice uh, sub sub <laughs> yeah. chair? chair. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The only thing I don't, I mean, as long as Say they don't have their, their stuff in order and they can't vote. Um, those of us who missed the meeting, yeah. right. well, there's a way well, we could, could vote if we yeah. either watch the tape, if you guys taped it. No, if, not that tape. That's not the, I, don't, I mean, we have to get the official record. It could be, it, it could be recorded or, um, I mean, we could, uh, we could set up that Yeah, we could have Berkshire Design do it. I did it for me. I did it for Morgan. Yeah, I listened. Oh right. So maybe we could, we could, we're closer. We still have a month. But if it looks like they're not going to, we're not going to vote that night. We should do something just in case. I mean, when you come back, you could certainly participate in the conversation. It's just your vote wouldn't count. Right. But we also know that these guys have a tendency. This has been going on for. Gosh knows if they're actually going to do it. Well, the other thing is that frequently the applicant would prefer to wait until more members of the committee are there if they feel they're going to lose. Yeah. That's true. You might want to let them know that there's yeah. going to be only five of us. Okay. So the other things that are the, uh, uh, you're talking about the, the six or seven zoning changes that Wayne presented to us the other day? Holly Street. No, no. You're talking about which one? Residential. Talking about residential. So last fall, you guys sort of prioritized which, you know, ones you want to really get involved in next. So the URA, B, and C stuff. With all of the report basically coming out of the Zoning Revisions Committee plus any other. Okay. You know, there was the, um, yeah, detached accessory 
structures and whether or not those, you know, the discussion about whether those could be converted to residences. Mm -hmm. um, and then whether or not, you know, how we address allowing some modest amount of infill in the um, districts, you know, if it's allowing one more unit in a huge house or, and how you define that if the work that you did with right. the subcommittee, basically. What about the, um the map itself, because we talked about, you know, there's those pockets that could be of, part of it too. URA in the yeah. middle of URB, and there's pockets yeah. of URC in the middle of URC. So do you want to put all of that on the table? So map changes plus... Second meeting in February? Uh, we could, well, um, yeah, but I'm wondering if we could even start after the um, Next week. January 26th. Yeah, let me know. Dr. Linda Mayer, we should, let's go over the list of the priorities. Let's, let's, okay. let's, yeah, we can. I mean, maybe I could get it distributed to you guys for that. You could start the conversation and sort of figure out. Because there are lots of little pieces to it. So. Mm -hmm. Is this Linda Mayer? Mm -hmm. That's it? For that. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, uh, is that before those seven changes that you guys presented that Wayne was working on? Or are those parallel or? The um, Holly Street, those got introduced to City Council. So the they're on the way. So they're oh, they're, back they for a public hearing. Oh, I thought we were going to have to wait till after the, the first the meeting of the, oh, they were well, they, the Yeah, they did. So it's so actually sometime in February there's going to be a joint hearing between ordinance and planning and probably Ed Lou because City Council have decided that a lot of these changes need to go to more than just the standard board. So mm -hmm. It could be that Ed Lou is in on the game too on some of the changes. So we're looking at maybe February um, for a joint public hearing of some kind. Uh, it might not get off the ground until March in those pieces because of the timing. And they just formed the committees now. They haven't really, as of today, they haven't scheduled their typical meeting dates or meeting times or anything like that. So we don't or chair or anything like that. So we don't know. Well, so, it seems to me any meeting that we have, uh, you know, all the normal business, scheduled business over at 9, we can have on the agenda, we can talk about the owners, as long as we can get out by 10. Yeah, well, let's do that. So the next meeting we'll do Linda Manor, probably vote them because we know we can't vote on it. Right. So I, I prefer to have like a fixed ending point if we can't vote anyway. So mm -hmm. if we even go to 9, then we'll do whatever on zoning. Okay. Um, and then... Um, First meeting in February, probably just do that one thing because if there's only five of us there, we don't want right. to do much on zoning. Right? So then maybe the second meeting, then we can come back to zoning. Right. Stuff. Second meeting. Okay. And we're going to have to meet with the, 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 the ordinance subcommittee at some point, either on our schedule or their schedule. Right. And they haven't, so they haven't, the city council hasn't done the subcommittees yet? They don't know who's. They just issued a, um, the council president just sent out the list today, I think. No. Oh. Um, but I think it's going to be on the agenda for council. I think the way it goes is next week at council, they'll confirm right. the committees. Okay. And then, um, how was the groundbreaking today? Did you go? Wet. It was I, wet. I didn't go. I'm wet. You didn't go in the end? Because I, I was going to go. I was, but I didn't have not going either. My driver was, was in the class, wasn't it? Yeah. Were there many people there? Um, yeah. Yeah? I mean, it wasn't. Short speeches. The um, Route Five. That was drive. That was drive. Those medical days. Yeah. Yeah. I said I'd go, so. I know. I was driving. My my driveway still wasn't plowed. I almost emailed you. Yeah. 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 So it's like 40 minutes. Okay. They had, you know, they had food and everything. It was too bad because no one ate anything. Uh, they have a chance of this? Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Free food. Yeah, uh, no driver. Uh, Next, I can go. Yeah, I can go. I'll get going up on that. Soggy sandwiches. Soggy sandwiches. Um, <laughs> do we have any other, uh, other things coming up that we should note? Uh, I can't think of. After Glendale Road? Um, nothing of any. Um, no. Not well. There'll be some more work at State Hospital. Right. Um, so. That's it. Yeah. 
And um, we talked about it briefly Tuesday morning. The fence is up in Hillendale, but do we know what works being done in Hillendale? I mean, that's been up for a couple, a couple of months. Right. Well, they, they cleaned up the bomb shelter there. Right. Yeah, yeah. and it's at that front part of yeah. But I wonder when the light goes up, because they really put the traffic looks, light. No, you they won't be done until the demand is met. And the demand can't be met until we get 30,000 oh, square feet. You can look in it. It seems like they've gotten the whole place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Then it's so um, Oh. And it's a, the well. Cole Morgan building's for sale, right? Yeah. yeah. Building? And no one's, like Cole Vest hasn't talked about buying that. They might have. Not, I, I mean, heard there, they were, there was some discussion about that, but, you know, and that wasn't part of the sale of Cole Morgan, so it's separate. Right. It's still owned by, it's an another company that owns Cole Morgan, but it's in the deal. Can I just sell? Huh? Can I just sell? Huh? Yeah, but th that building, they didn't sell that. The, oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, so the company that owns company Cole Morgan right now does not own that. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. does not own that building. What about um, Opal and uh, you know, the Clark School? Are they going to have to come to us? Yeah. Who? The people who are doing the development at Clark School? Oh, oh part, part of that residential zoning change. Yeah. When you, oh, when you talked about in the fall, was, but I don't think trying to get ahead of yeah. stuff like that. I don't. I think the numbers they're proposing. I haven't seen the precise plans, but the numbers they're proposing wouldn't um, can fit under the existing plans. So they might have to come to us because well, if it doesn't fit the zoning, what do they want a variance? No, no, no. It does the number of units, but if it's a tra uh, transition from you know educational, which is exempt, to residential. And the number of parking required required for residential is different, so that's what would probably trigger the site plan approval. Oh. But it's not a special permit. I don't think. Well, actually, I think about. I'm not 100 percent sure because I haven't seen the actual proposal. Uh, any any news on the VA? When they're going to start. The needs. They need to come for permits too. I think they were because they're a federal government. They can do whatever they want. We don't have to approve it. I think they can. Well, there's a. Yeah, that's right. It's a private entity yeah. on their land. Yeah. yeah. You know, I talked to them well, probably over a year ago, and they said they were all ready to go. Well, it was after that meeting. I don't know how long ago the meeting was, your neighborhood was, but it was shortly after that meeting, and they were ready to go, and then I didn't hear anything. They did put the fence up. For the construction? No. Oh, oh. The neighbors asked the neighbor, for, uh, uh, asked for, for them to fence their property. And they actually did it long after they said it, but they did it. Ten foot fence. So it is possible, what I was told by the developer was that they did get special, the developer said that there was special federal legislation that would specifically exempt nonprofits that were doing work on federal land from coming and complying with local ordinances. So I have no idea. I didn't see the legislation. He said he would send it to me. And so, you know, if that's I, I suppose the possibility is still there that they actually wouldn't have to come to any board. Uh, yeah, they'll just tack that little stuff around or something. <laughs> right. Bury it. Yeah. <laughs> Bury it. Yeah. 2,000 pages of other legislation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought it was. We were going to see it. Yeah, but we haven't heard anything. So, I mean, they'd have to notify about. You know, we would. They don't have their own. They have security, but they don't have fire protection. And I don't think up there. So, we'd have that's to know right. about. <laughs> you know, mm. about yeah, I, I mean, I think they've scaled it down. From what I heard. What was it going to be? Well, they were chirping about 200, 200 what? Uh, units. Oh. Well, residential? Uh, huge. What kind of units? Um, housing units for homeless vets. Kind of like SROs. The SROs? Yeah. Um, well, not, exact, not exactly SROs. They're like... They're like small in, efficiency yeah, apartments. Yeah. Like the ones that go west, really. Right, but they were really yeah. sort of like... What I saw, they were sort of townhouse units, side-by-side -side units. It wasn't one big building, but it was sort of mm -hmm. 
um, yeah, in fact, ground we, level. Yeah, we went out to see our pictures of the one that they did at Pittsfield. Yeah, they they actually look nice. If you know, if they don't build so darn any of them, it'd be fine. Soldier on the floor. Yeah. Okay. They tax exempt too. Yeah, soldier on the floor. No, I mean the property. Like, can we get property tax on? Yeah. The VA butts all the way to Bear Hill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right at the top of the road. Yeah. Yeah. You can drive up around. Yeah. Very nice, though. I knew it was a big piece of land. What if they ever put that tower up? Look at the um, cell tower? Yeah. Uh, On Smith Oak? Yeah. They did. What's up? At the AT&T tower? I think so. I was talking to That's the other one. Lisa and she was That's the other side, yeah. <laughs> Here's what the Pittsfield ones look like. Yeah, there's a the tower up there yeah. already. It looks like some of the stuff in the hospital, huh? Yeah, it kind of looks like they look bad. Yeah. Good. We can fold the brochure in the other. Yeah. Yeah. 200 is just a lot. Yeah. 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 That's what we yeah. said. Well, it's also they provide the social services those guys need. So they said. But you know, there's a hundred. They say they have 150 homeless people up there now. It's mm -hmm. like, really? That's yeah. It's in the hospital. Yeah. Wow. The shelter. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually pretty nice. We can't start the 7:45 before the 7. Can we? Can we? The 7:45 hearing. Yeah. I think we're going to have to. It's 7:45. The yeah. way the clock is fast. I have 7:45. So you think, um, do you want me to check with him again? To well, check, if not, if they're not ready, then what would you do? Yeah. 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 Possible help. We gotta do something. Continue it. Well, why don't we just give them a little That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop the question later. Let's do that. They're trying to give all their training. Yeah, well, they're trying to go around the thing. What did they go to? Oh, um, what we're working on. We're going to, yeah. Sure, hope you can leave some of this paper here. Okay, huh? Um, I'm very pleased to read that the Northampton Recreation Department says there will be no obscene displays. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, thank you. Like what? off my mind. Just in here, I I love the way the floors go out this place. Is Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is and you, you've seen a lot of Yeah, you've seen a lot of Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. yeah 18 it's is like, so beautiful. It's night and day. Have you been it's in hard, it's hard. It's hard to it's even remember what it looked yeah. like. I have to like close my eyes. Oh, like Does it have like wood paneling? It looks like somebody's basement and, um, rec room. Yeah. Wallpaper, yeah. right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Do they have new furniture? Yeah. Yeah. I know. So, um... 10 minutes? Okay. No, no, no. We're going to call um, Mass Development in. But um, I'm going to have to turn this off and unplug it and then bring it down here. Because <laughs> I can't figure out how to flip the image. Oh. Unless you want to just do a paper presentation. They're ready to do PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, uh, we got, well, we got the paper. It's, it's not like it's a big room where okay. there's public. Is there public? Um, just the camera. Yeah. No, there's no one out there waiting. I don't think we need that, do we? Okay. Unless there's right. something they're going to show that we don't have. Right. We'll just look, look at it. All right. So, stand on your head. It's a yoga pose and a plan for it. I can wait a while. Okay. You guys, um, maybe like ever share. Sure. Which one is the one? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna look on the board. Yeah. 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 This is 
a special program, and Devin's not here. You this know, is you, just you can't vote on in yeah. subdivision. Yeah. Oh, this is a subdivision. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Devin. Yeah. 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 Y
um, and they've developed the, the set of plans, which is a revision of the very original uh, Ford Crossing, which was going to be south of the Coach House. The Ford Crossing is now located north of the Coach House. Um, as you can see here, the master plan has undergone a number of revisions since the beginning when TCB um, was the designated developer by DKIM for the property. Um, what we're doing is really is just the next piece of roadway so that we can um, create uh, lots for further development. Right Builders has built some townhouses and single family homes. TCB has built some apartments and uh, low income housing. Um, and we're moving on. Uh, the Moser Street on the west side of the master plan that uh, you have open right there is we have a developer that we're in final negotiation with for that um, bungalow area on the western side. Uh, and now we're looking for even more land because the market, as we've seen, or as Wright Builders has seen, is there. And he, they, they have a number of requests uh, from people for housing here on this, on this site. So it's kind of key that we move at this point with uh, opening up more land for future development. Um, we, we do have a couple of issues with DPW that I'll, I'll raise with you later on, later after after Gale Associates provides kind of an, a, a, a basic um, uh, background of the design we've um, we've, we've got on, on plan. So I'll give you over to John Perry from Gale. <clears throat> right. So stand up. The um, the road extension plan, as Ellen mentioned, is it really the extension of an existing road, Village Hill Road, which is the main road going along the, the center of the development. We're taking that from the terminal end near the coach house. Which page are you on? That's the one. Yeah. Yep, the layout plan is C1. C, uh, C6 is the best one to go through. So if you're familiar with this, the project site, <coughs> there's a, the main road is Village Hill Road uh, that other roads branch off of and feed the site. <coughs> this is the coach house uh, just to the north of that terminal end at a hammerhead. What we plan to do is take Village Hill Road, extend it into Ford Crossing, which we're going to extend from uh, New Santi and Moser Street in a easterly fashion where we'll pick that pick up uh, Olander Drive from its terminal end and intersect with four crossing as shown on C6. The total length of new roadway is approximately 1,000 feet, including all three roads. <coughs> um, again, this is to provide the opportunity for future uh, development in the northern campus of, of, of uh, Village Hill which is purely residential, <coughs> with the exception of the coach house. <coughs> How is the coach house being used? We, we, we're marketing as a commercial property. Uh, we've had a couple of prospects actually looking at it, kicking the tires, and unfortunately we just lost uh, a buyer. But we hope that there will be more out there that will come and see what a beautiful building it is. What are the types of businesses that might be interested in the coaches? Um, could be a small office uh, that's not, not manufacturing, um, more or less commercial. Um, could, could it be retail or a restaurant? It could if there was a need for if there was a if somebody was interested in that in that. Uh, we do have the utilities available so that that could could be supported for a, a restaurant. There's three-phase power to that area. There's plenty of sewer and water. But this subdivision, the road extensions, is mainly focused on the, the, the residential development. Right. Exactly. The, 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 the detriment to retail would be the parking requirements. But currently, we, ha we really haven't master planned north of Ford Crossing, so there may be some potential there to add two lots together. We're just waiting for somebody to come up with uh, interest.
in the same vein as parking, um, as shown in C6, we are providing some on-street parking, which is very typical at Village Hill, in fact required. <coughs> um, uh, near the coach house, you see there are three on-street parking spaces. There are various on-street parking spaces on Ford Crossing on the southern side of the road only. And we're extending uh, one, two, three, four, five on-street parking spaces on Olander Drive as well. Uh, you can see that we're providing adequate street trees per the subdivision regulations. There are a few waivers which are summarized on the layout sheet C6, mainly referring to the geometry of the road itself. Um, for example, subdivision requires, subdivision regulations require all intersections to be at a 90 degree T intersection. You see that we have some curvature in our roadway, so technically um, where it's a curve going through the intersection, that's not technically a, a T. Uh, DPW has reviewed it and take no issue with, with the geometry that we have provided here. <coughs> um, I, I was looking through the DPW comments. Did they um, uh, indicate, uh, make a comment about a waiver necessary for the driveway access at the end of at the intersection of Ford and Olander? They didn't raise it. So, so in the zoning, the zoning was just changed um, this year to allow driveways to either line up um, with intersecting streets or have a 50 foot offset. The subdivision rules still um, mirror what the zoning had indicated previously. So technically, it would be a waiver from subdivision rules until we get that change for subdivision. I don't, I don't, uh, from DPW's perspective, and certainly from OPD's perspective, that's not really an issue. But it's just want to make sure that's documented in the final plan. So we're talking about this driveway here, proposed driveway, which um, I think in your comments indicated would be a residential use, yes. although it's not really noted on the plans. Um, yeah. yeah, on the east side of Olander, we have 11 existing houses that right builders built. It's called Morningside. Then you'll see a break, and you'll see the canopy of two large beech trees. Uh, in look, talking with our landscape architects that we have on, on this project, you don't want to disturb the ground under the canopy because beech trees are very sensitive. So what we're doing there, instead of building residential homes, is that that's actually the location that we want to put the memorial for, for Old Main. Uh, when we demoed Old Main, we saved the fountain. That was just outside of the portico, if you were there before it got demoed. Um, so the fountain actually exists on a DPW bubble wrap uh, for a time at which we can uh, we can develop the memorial at that location. So it kind of provides a nice spot where the beach trees get saved, and we can fill this in with actually the actual location of the fountain. You're talking about uh, this area right here? No, uh, on the other side. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the fountain is at what was there, uh, and where we're proposing the memorial park is probably within 10 feet of where it always had been. The reason I, I was curious about this area is because it doesn't show up on the plans, and I'm not sure yeah. where on the master plan. I mean, all the master plan always shows is a park. Yeah. But this is, is it actually a protected piece of land that you cannot build on, or is it just... Yes, it's going to be. It's not put into protection yet. Right, I'd like it's that's Beach Street Park. Uh, what we call Beach Street Park. We have a plan that we're generating for pathways. Right. And it will be a park that the Landowners Association is responsible for and maintaining. Right. And it will always remain up. Right, but I'd like to see that on mm -hmm. the plan. I'd like to see it. I'm not sure how you do it, Carolyn. Do you have to do it in deed or what, what they have to do? But I'd like to see that that area delineated as being set aside. Because I know right builders. Assumes it's never going to be built on, but yeah. I want to make sure that it's protected somehow. And yeah. Which one are you talking about now? It's this. So same beach. Okay. It's this area that has four. four it's got the trees on it now. There's four major beach trees yeah. on that. Yeah. Right, and it's the one that everybody says. Everybody calls it the park. Yeah. Everybody says it's going to be a park yeah. and, and never be developed. But yeah. I'd like to see it delineated. And, and I'm not one, sure if you have to turn it over to the city or. Well, the one thing it. we don't know yet until we get the developer for that neighboring parcel is the western boundary. So I, I, I we met with right builders 
uh, the western boundary is not right build -ish. The northern boundary is right build -ish. Oh, you're talking about this one? Yes. Well, I, 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 however you guys envision, I want to make sure because mm -hmm. these house, any houses built here yep. are going to have the assumption that this is a park. The houses that are already built here, yep. it's a sum that's a park. The houses that are here assume yep. it's a park, but yep. it's never been... So I want to see it somehow yeah. delineated. It's, it's, in our, it's in all of our master planning as a part. I, and, uh, and our right. intent is to create it once we can generate that fourth line. Right, and since we know we're going to continue tonight, I'd like to see some kind of delineation on here. Sure. That if, where that's going to be. And it would be listed as, as approximate. Right. 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 Mm. Yes. Have you talked to the memorial committee yeah. about relocating the fountain? Uh, I know Beth Murphy has been in conversation, and I can only answer that she has, although I'm not aware personally of her conversations. Well, I think it's, it's more appropriate location than the one that we're planning on. Yeah, I was assuming that she had talked to the Memorial Committee, but maybe I'm well, wrong. I, yeah, I think she has talked to them. I just didn't know whether they bought into it. I guess along that same vein, I think um, you know none of these areas are defined as, as uh, with lot boundaries, and I understand that, and or designated as to what the use is going to be within this block that's going to be created, and then immediately adjacent here. So I think um, from um, a planning perspective, you you all need to know in terms of the road what what's it going to be servicing what what potential, you know, is it going to be uh, multifamily, townhouse, single-family homes, and you typically require property um, lot boundaries so you know where the curb cuts are going to be. And I know you've got a driveway here, um, but, you know, there should be a box here showing, uh, you know, approximate lines for the yep. park boundary, the same as for a single-family house lot here and where the boundaries are for the Memorial Park. Um, as part of the subdivision. Sure. That can be added easily enough. The area between the, the six, well, you can see that there are six single family lots that Red Builders are proposing at the moment, which is in the corner of Ford Crossing and Olander, which is where we're showing a common driveway. Um, other than those six lots, the land to the west of them is going to be, uh, is actually got an expression of interest um, advertised right now for developers. And there's a number of developers that have the package in hand, and they they, they are uh, needing to respond by the end of January back to us, and then we're going to go through a selection process. Uh, we are showing on our current master plan townhouses in that location. We're assuming that that is what's going to get built, but we're leaving it a little bit open to developers to come in and propose something, whether it be those townhouses or something else to us. Um, the utilities that we're proposing right now in the street are for the townhouses. Two front Village Hill, one front Sport Crossing, and then there's a couple internal uh, to there. Um, but right now, because we have, have the expression of interest out, we can't nail it down more than that. Does that mean because you can't get... Oh, sorry, Mark. No, I was going to say, this common driveway, though, isn't part of... It's nice only for the six single-family lots that Wright Builders is proposing Understood. to build. that. A nice discussion is just the road and yes. the intersection. It's not that common driveway. No, we're building the common driveway. Uh, Carolyn asked that that be on the plan, so we put it on the plan. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're we're only building the driveway, not the aprons to the driveway to the little driveways. Mm -hmm. We're just building the co the common driveway, 14 feet wide times approximately uh, 220 feet long. Oh, and you're putting the I think you're putting a water line. In the we're putting the sewer line and we're putting the water line. Yes. And we're bringing electric telephone and cable to a point, which is actually the first lot line between the two lots that are on the northern side. We're coordinating with right builders on the location. Right, because they haven't come. They have to come to us for a permit as well, because they don't have a permit yet. Yeah, right. I believe they had a tech review committee earlier this week. Right, they did. Uh, and I think their Carol, their goal is to come to us in March. I think. That's what they said. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, when is the, the appropriate time on this common driveway to discuss whether or not, or to ensure, I guess, whether or not it, it doesn't continue on and say intersect with Village Hill Road 15 years down the line, and all of a sudden a driveway is more of a road than a driveway, and it creates problems down the line? You know? The common driveway is going to be owned by the people that own those six, six lots. The property line actually goes right down the center of it. Mm -hmm. 
So there's going to be an association of those six lots that own the interest and fee of that common driveway and the utilities. And then we have, we're have we going to be generating an, e an easement for DPW and the city DPW to be able to access the water and sewer utilities as, as they need to. I thought that, but you've got a request for, uh, for interest in for this this here. property on that on, on on that west side or here right here yeah yes. yes so my concern would be if a developer I'm just yeah. making this up says yeah. hey you know what, what what if we flip this and just continue this on and put more we we wouldn't accept that mass development wouldn't accept that proposal from a developer I mean I think I think the issue is how does it you all could re evaluate that at the time and see if it makes sense. I think it does sort of present this um, issue of building roads without really know what the, knowing what the development right. is internally. I think, I guess I would say, given that this is a block and that um, most of the time when you're talking about subdivisions, you're concerned about vehicular circulation and pedestrian and bicycle circulation and ensuring that there's adequate provisions for all of those. Thing. So I guess in terms of vehicular, and I mean typically when we talk about whether it's a common driveway or um, a street, um, you know, that, that the focus, the primary focus is vehicular with the associated pedestrian amenities, but um, if you, but you've got you've got a lot of that connectivity anyway because it's a it's a grid essentially here. So I think the connectivity probably in this case might but the more crucial connectivity might be the concern about how are the pedestrians going to get from point A to point B or across the campus here. And if there's a hard and fast property boundary here, um, you know, what do you do with the path that's coming across? And, and I think. Um, I guess that would be my concern more than if um, there was a creation of um, connection just for vehicles in the future going across. I, mean, I think that's something you could work out in a, in a on piecemeal fashion potentially. I think the overall picture of pedestrian connectivity though is not easily accomplished in a piecemeal way because this person buys the property and says, no, I don't want anybody else going across or next right. to. Well, I guess that's where I'm struggling is with the, the, just the piecemeal nature of all these reviews without knowing what the big picture is going to be so that pedestrian where in the big picture is pedestrian access always going to be or where are roads never going to be you know when I and I see something like that that is a common driveway now but maybe later it's going to be a cut through because it's convenient for people to get from this side of the campus to the other and all of a sudden there's more vehicle traffic on that than anybody ever envisioned and it becomes a safety thing and you know all that sort of stuff. But not knowing what that big picture is, it's hard to, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure Mass Development would probably um, conclude this as well, but it's probably easier to stay on the Main Street network, given this is probably all going to be very low traffic. Yeah, no, I, low I density, it's So it's yeah. probably faster. So I, I understand that where you're going with that. I think given the street network that exists, probably for vehicular, um, circulation, that will be the principal mechanism. So even if you did punch through the driveway, it would probably just be internal. So this person, instead of going out this way, might cut across, as opposed to someone outside the neighborhood using right, it. Right, right. No, I, yeah. The common drive will be owned by six people, those six houses. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, I guess I think it's, <clears throat> but you know, the point is, when you guys come back, It'd be nice to show the boundaries of what Wright Builders is proposing we to do buy. Want, we do want another plan that's not on that plan. Right. The boundaries for that area that's going to be the park, the yep. boundary where you're RFPing the, the spot to the west. Um, you know, the more, and also you, to, to the north um, of Ford Crossing, there's you, you don't have the properties or potential properties. Again, Usually That's when we, just other land. I know, but usually when we, okay, a subdivision, we see the lots. And so yeah. whatever's north of Fort Crossing, I see it on this picture, but this is, you know. Yeah. That's one, well, one problem we have right now is timing on the master plan um, coming out. We have it generated. The mayor has asked that we not make it public until the CAC has viewed it. Well, that's what we were talking about that today. The CAC, as far as we know, doesn't have it not scheduled to meet to review it. 
Uh, we've been we've been asking the mayor to set up a time, and unfortunately, we're at his mercy. Right. Um, but that's why you don't have the new master plan that has been vetted at the mayor's meetings, the monthly mayor's meetings, with staff, with DPW. I can't, I, you know, we're we're not at liberty to to share it yet at the request of the mayor. Right. I think Wright Builders has it though. Um, no, I think what they're referring to is the RFP or whatever that's been issued that shows that next chunk of the master plan. But not yeah, we're not showing north plan. of Fort Crossing on what we submitted to the RFQ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, like I say, the CAC is the, needs to be the first eyes that right. sees it first. Um, still on Fort Crossing, the plans on your new C6 still show the, the sidewalks right up against the curb, especially along those parking spots? Yes, on Village Hill Road, when we first built Village Hill Road, we, we put the sidewalk up against the parking. And this is kind of a anomaly, I guess, uh, with DPW uh, telling us that the sidewalk needs to be at the back end of the right of way now. That's what I would have assumed. Um, curb, tree belt, sidewalk. Well, it's not what it is on Village Hill Road that we built, got approved, and the city accepted. Um, it is really? on the, the other streets. Uh, but what we've what we found uh, from Wright Builders is that the people who bought in those townhouses on Eastview, at the corner of Oleander and Moser, mm -hmm. have complained to him, and I think the complaint has gone up to the DPW that when they get out of their car and they walk over to the sidewalk, they go through mud and they don't like it. So they're actually putting pa patio stones in the tree belt so they don't have to walk on mud. So to answer that concern and to make it more user friendly, uh, we have on this design pushed the sidewalk up against the on-street parking as it is on Village Hill Road. And that would give us plenty of room in the back of the sidewalk to plant the street trees as we've shown on the plan. On the just, just to clarify, Village Hill Road, the first section is all commercial. So typically in a commercial setting you have sidewalks that go up to the on-street parking. Um, so I think that's the difference too. There's also access to, in a residential setting, you have driveways and private parking. And um, I think I don't think it's an invalid concern for DPW to raise. It's not as it's not as cut and dry. I think in that even if you move the sidewalk, kept the sidewalk along the street, as you can see, there's still going to be some grass area that people would have to traverse to get to their property. So it's, at some level, there's going to be some grass strip somewhere. So Well, also, because if you're plowing those parking, it's going to plow right into the sidewalk, right. which is kind of defeats the purpose of having a sidewalk. It gets plowed over. And the, other, the north part of Village Hill shows a tree belt between the sidewalk right. and the road, too. What about biking along the street? No. No, the whole idea, I mean, this is a very low volume street, but the whole idea is going back to the special permit, which I think is, is a problem with the plans in front of you is it's not showing those connections. But the plan was the north-south connector, which is Village Hill Road, is, is an extra wide sidewalk, it's 10 feet. And it's, um, they put, which is one of my staff comments, I think it was in the staff report showing the 10 foot landing here on the other end, because the whole idea from the, um, beginning was to have a north um, bike path connector that would then drop down the hill to or go wherever. So they made the 10 foot landing, but I think it needs to also be clear that the north connect bike head connection is going to continue on the other side. The other requirement of the planning board during the special permit process was an east west connection, and as it gets built, as the streets get built, they were supposed to be designed and allocated and and built, and so for the Mosier Street subdivision, there was a strip going across that block for the for the bike peg, and then that in the master plan it shows continuing across this super block. But I think for this block, I I think that's important. I think that's the issue is if you want off road, and then here there's just so small um, travel that you should be comfortable to either use the off road or the bike pad or just be on the street. But I think, I mean, from our perspective, it's a big issue that it's not even out, even if it's not designed, at least the layout with taking into consideration the grading is shown on the plan so that as these parcels get developed piecemeal, um, private 
developer know that that's where this piece is going to be, and, right. and um, if it, even if it's not built at the time the subdivision is constructed, that it's there and it's in place, and, it's gonna, and there's some mechanism to say, okay, it's going to get built in X time frame. You want to show it what? as a place saver. Well, what we feel is that it's shown in the master plan, and that is what we're running from, is the master plan. Because it, in order to show it through a development parcel, uh, it, we're probably going to guess wrong. And I don't want to build it and then a developer comes along, destroys it because it's in his way and relocates it because then it's just lost money. So, I mean, through the master plan we have sh our showing currently and the new master plan shows an east-west connector that goes on the north of Beach Street Park or in between Beach Street Park and Wright Builders, six lots, continues over continues south of the coach house over to Musanti Drive. And we do intend to build it, um, you know, if, if it makes uh, someone more comfortable. An MOU could get written uh, that says we're going to do it, but we have done everything that our master plans have shown so far in trying to make sure that we have the connectivity that we've agreed to. The master plan has always been conceptual, and so when it, you want it to change, you change the master plan. So this is the construction document. I think yep. it really needs to be shown because... I, I don't know how we show it with any sorts of meets and bounds that... Would but you did it over for Mosher Street. Because we, we lotted all those single-family homes out. Well, well, that's what I'm suggesting. You need to define this, where it's going to be. It's, it's not going to happen on that because we've got the expression of interest out now. And we've got a process by which we were expect, uh, getting, having developers respond and are going to select from that as to how they plan to develop uh, parking, possible garages in the back of these units, how big the units would be. So to design it is, a, is kind of a waste in, before we have selected the developer. And then we work together with the developer to actually locate it and get, gain your approval. Could we show this future? Approximate location. You show dotted lines, yeah. certainly. And it, what it'll do is it'll basically mirror the master plan that we're providing. Nice. Just yeah. Ending. Yeah. Sure. Place saver. Yeah. yeah. The, the piecemeal nature really is the whole project depends on the market, the other things that you can run into, what the developer will do, what the developer will do. And we just have to be used to it. There's no way. If there were one entity that was, had infinite resources, so they'd come in and design the whole project and say that's the way it's going to be. But this is not going to be that way. It's a pretty unique partnership with private. And, uh, and we've, we've, we've reached the limit of our grants. This is now all our money. We were successful with the city to get grants to up to where we're at, but now we've been pinch pennies. Or at least not, don't, don't do something to throw it away. Don't do it twice. So you, you get money for selling the Yes. Right. Not enough to pay for the, the roadways, but right. yes. I just quickly interject. They're done across the hall just as an as a interjection here. Well, it's, so I think we should. But I, I guess I'd like to follow up on that. I, I understand that it's piecemeal, and, and um, that's okay, but this is the construction document, so going from a conceptual master plan and just assuming that it's going to get built sometime with no indication of the plan is not the way the board has approved the plan before. Well, no, I, that's, what I, that's what I think we need to see that. That's why I want to see some delineation of where that, that park area, that reserved area is going to be. I want to, I mean, the more, specific, the more specific you can make it, the easier it is for us. Because right now it's like there's a lot of faith. There's a lot of, like, yeah. you know, and Within the next 45 days, we're going to have the Beach Street Park designed to what we are going to put out the bid. So, I mean, we do have a concept right now of what those pathways will be through the park. Right. I mean, do you want to wait 45 days till we approve this? No. Uh, the idea here is right builders cannot move forward to this road is built, so we do not want to extend this project any longer than we have. Right. It seems like you just do placeholders and just say... Like, just you know, something. I want to see the borders. Maybe show the borders what right builders are going to buy. Show the borders of what you're showing it's, on it's, on C8, we're right. actually showing. Um, it's not shown on every drawing, but it is shown. Right. We can copy it over to to the layout plan. Uh, C8, I feel like I think. So, uh, sorry, back to the sidewalk for a second. Yep. I can't remember what the resolution was. So, your plan here shows curb, sidewalk, tree belt. Right. And DPW had a problem with that. I still have a problem with it because it's. I mean, DPW I don't understand. DPW wants the right of way line to be the back of the sidewalk. Right. 
and and also, I didn't understand the point you were talking about people getting out of the car, stepping in mud. So, they're, who's putting in pavers in the tree belt? The resident, townhouse resident. They're digging up the tree belt and putting in. I can't speak to that. I can tell stones. you rumors that I heard. Right. I, well, I mean, it's, it's just like anywhere in the city. If you have, you can landscape the your, you know, the right of way between. Yeah, this is this is this is a sidewalk. There's like no not being a magic sidewalk. There's right. no special sidewalk. There's sidewalks all over town <laughs> that go curb, tree belt, sidewalk. Okay. So I uh, actually street sidewalk tree belt does work better for just the reasons they were talking about. You get out your car, you get onto a nice sidewalk, you can walk to your driveway. And what do you do with the back. plowing and what do you do with Well the... you have to plow the sidewalk anyway. The sidewalk you plow the snow onto the sidewalk and you plow the sidewalk onto the tree strip. That snow still ends up on the tree strip. And you keep the sidewalk. Right. So you're saying you're you're in favor of I'm in favor of actually having the sidewalk up against the, the road. Well, I think it's actually but just the, the whole Devil strip sidewalk front lawn thing is this sort of leafy suburbia kind of concept. But it doesn't really work if you're looking to actually make street parking work. You'll notice on the other side of the street where we don't have parking, we do have the tree belt and then the sidewalk. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. But if you want your street parking to work, you're much better off having a sidewalk where people can get in and out of it. Otherwise, um, you know, you get out of the car and, or you open, if there's any kind of mound there, you open the passenger door and you're picking up dirt at the bottom of your door and you get out and it's muddy and it's snowy. And even if it's even if it's fine and you get out and walk across it, you're causing soil compaction, which is bad for the trees, which is bad for the grass. You're much better off if you want street parking to work with the sidewalk. Not that I can vote on this, so, so you can ignore everything I like just <laughs> No, it's just different than every sidewalk we've talked about for I don't know, forever. You know, it's just that's the you know the way we I know, but the way we do it is wrong. <laughs> right, we, we would we would like to know if possible tonight so that we can revise the drawings if right. we need to because uh, we would, would like to whenever the next time is we come in to have a set of plans that can be voted on right. and approved all right so what's the uh, Carol what's your I mean thoughts on this I mean well I mean to the extent I get the idea about the sidewalk where the parking is and they've, they've alternated so uh, maybe the the uh, the trade is you know where there's on street parking you can have a sidewalk up to the um to the, the parking and then otherwise the sidewalk goes to the back of the park well i'm just saying what's what are all the other streets well, except they, they talk about village hill road is the, the sidewalks up on the curb down the, the southern end of it but what's it on olander where jonathan just built all those houses with townhouses on moser what's it's in between it's yeah. street i think it's in there. the single family the homes the yeah. sidewalks on the back of the property line and the tree belt is about 13 feet wide mm -hmm. it's huge right there's no on street parking on the side of the single family homes there's on street parking on the opposite side where the townhouses are where the townhouses and the apartments are yeah I just want to, I, I mean, it seems inconsistent to have it some places and then decide, to, oh, well, I don't know. It's also a matter of constructability as well. We've had issues with um, if the contractor's tolerance was off by an inch, then now you're over the property line. Mm -hmm. And you have to have an easement, and there are some issues with installing bounds in the right of way because you have to go into the sidewalk. We can get past that. It's just it's an issue. Right. Yeah. This would resolve that issue. And what was the DPW comments? I don't know. DPW wanted all all of the sidewalks to the back edge of right of way. Right. And I'm sure it's so all the crews know that they own to the back edge of right of way and that's it. Right. You know? So what do people on the board think? I guess I understand the argument that if it's if it's driven if it's driven by you know, it's a residential area and historically you have the tree belt and the sidewalk, but if in this case it's driven by street parking, then Andrew's comments make sense. That you want to go wherever there's street, like Carolyn said, wherever there's street parking, you can put sidewalk first. Wherever there isn't street parking, you can put the tree belt. Mm. Well, that's what the plan's kind of showing right, right. now. Anybody else? Well, I think we're going to do some mixed lessons. I really haven't thought about it, but it does make sense. Which picture? What Andrew said. 
Oh, people are agreeing with me. <laughs> <place? laughs> in thing. other words, you you agree with what the plan should be right now. Well, where there are, where there is on-street parking, yeah. right. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I, only I, where there's on-street parking. Even I agree with that. Makes yeah, that makes sense to me too. All right. So the fact that the the plans are showing it that way, DPW had an issue with it though. So, are we going to go? What does DPW have to sign off on this? Though, don't they? They have to sign off on the street acceptance. At that's the that's what I mean. So built. DPW wants it the other way. But what are they basing their opinion on? Well, the rule, the regulations have the tree belt, substantial tree belt on the sidewalk. So that's the, that's what's subject to the rule. So they're asking for a waiver. So they weigh in on the waiver and you know you guys ultimately get to decide. If it was a strict engineering concern about an a deficiency, you sh you know should rely on the city's engineer for, for that kind of recommendation. This is one of those things that's probably, you know, could go either way. Um, I think they're probably concerned about, you know, I don't, I think either way people are going to get their feet wet or muddy when they're trying to get to their property because you're going to have to walk through one strip or another and, you know, compaction will happen on either side of the strip. But, it, you know, it's not, it's not a huge, I don't think it's a huge issue. I think typically where we've had designated on-street parking, we have on-street parking throughout the city, it's just not pull-off pull parking that, that's striped. So right. you can park on the side of the road anywhere in the city and get out and you know, walk to your sidewalk. But um, I don't. I th I think for them it's it's it is more of an ease of, of understanding of where you know the right of way line is and that kind of thing. But um, it is, it does vary throughout this subdivision and throughout the city. Are the subdivision rules with the sidewalk are they independent of whether there's street parking or not? Right, because we don't no matter usually, what, it's always. Usually, we have 22 or 24 wide streets, and we don't have cutouts for parking. This is, you know, 30 feet wide here, right. but you have an extra eight foot of width just for parking. We don't usually have that. Usually, have a straight run, and you can have cars can park on the street. Well, except I would pull in the areas where the sidewalks. I pull it all the way back to the right of way line, so that it's some. So you're sort of getting a little bit of a. When we look at Village Hill Road, it, that's just continuing what currently exists on Village Hill Road, so it'll kind of differ within the length of Village Hill Road if you want that to to get pulled back to the right of way line. You can always make the sidewalk just a little bit wider. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's get through because we got these guys are done across all. Um, if this is this is one of the last things we have to deal with, but um, I, it is an odd thing where there's there's cutouts. I can see on Village Hill Road where there's cutouts. The cutout basically takes up the tree belt it's up to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, so we planted the trees behind the sidewalk in that location. Right. Still wouldn't. Know. Right. The only point. Well, you were yeah, because your point at Village Hill Road, where the sidewalk is on the curb, is not the whole length of Village Hill Road. It's where there's cutouts. Which is what they're showing on Ford Crossing. So it's mm -hmm. consistent with Village Hill Road that where there are cutouts, yeah. the cutouts mm -hmm. go up to the sidewalk. Yeah. I just hate going against DPW. I mean, that's just it's a it's a tough thing for us to say. Yeah, it looks like it's just that one length of that south end of Ford Crossing that's right. the issue. Right. Everything I mean, else is. Alternatively, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a, this full designated bump out of eight feet. Um, you know, I mean, it's a redesign, but most of this is residential where you have access to, I mean, it's really just visitors coming, occasionally parking, you know, in front of The concern there is that we've got vertical granite curbing along the entire length of the street. And if you if you were asking for the cars to mount that, that's a very dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. And if they stay inside of it, now they are imposing within the travel lane. So I think it's either we provide the on-street parking or we don't provide the on-street parking. But most of the on-street parking, if not all of it, is for visitors. That the developer is responsible for providing the parking on its own property for the tenants in the buildings. Well, ready. What do we think? Either we leave it the way it is. I think it's okay. 
Except the DPW is going to want to, that's where we're going to, we are contradicting the DPW. The DPW wants it back to the property line. And their comments are, they'd like to see it back. Well, uh, if you give the engineer a set of rules, you know, they either keep the rule or they don't. It's all black and white. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we can talk to the DPW. Carolyn, do you want to talk to the DPW? Because, I mean, if we're okay with it the way it is, yeah, we're still going to continue it anyway. We're not yeah. going to vote tonight. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the sidewalk, we're okay with. Um, other issues besides the one that listed in the Carolyn's staff report. You want me to go through the, the issues? Have you seen these? The uh, DPW issues? Issue? No, no, the, the, the other issues. Um, we didn't know they were over there. Okay. Okay. No, Oh, Street right trees are proposed in some locations on the private lot side. That's the same issue. That's, That's the same, same issue. Mm -hmm. A full traffic study must be weighed for this section as it falls into the original traffic study for the overall build out of the campus. Can you say it must be waived? Officially, a full traffic study must be waived. Yes, for this. Uh, that's Carolyn's comment. Right. Right. It's a separate subdivision. I mean, it's just a. It's, it's just a waiver. Uh, yeah. I know what, what, what I've seen in the um, the past submittals from uh, I think it was Ty and Bond and Berkshire, who did the other roadways. They did a little description of what was in the overall master plan and the uh, the meet by E and R and. Um, yeah, that's fine. Actually, you said that was coming. I never saw it, so I don't know if that didn't get put together. The latest yeah. uh, traffic report, we have that. Okay. So I can give you a little synopsis of that, and that should clarify everything. Okay. Franklin? Well, well, Carol, your note then about must be waived doesn't mean there's a problem. Right. No, it just means we need to identify, to document do it, it yeah. and say yeah. it was We're going to request a waiver and tell you why, because okay. the development that's here is within the previous right. study. All right, now let's see, there's an existing specimen tree at the end of Village Hill that is failing and would certainly need to come down for construction. It's a big tree. It's not, it's not one of the 40 specimen trees that were identified in the tree survey. Right, but it says that the notice, this should be noted and documented. It, it's noted on the plan. Is it? Yeah. Uh, if you go to sheet C13. And the little ones are going to go to the big ones. Is that one on the, on the specimen tree now? It's right at the end of Village Hill Road. That's what I was... It's not one of the 40, though. Yes, it is one of the 356 trees, but it's not one of the 40. Okay. Not what I so we've, we've had Arborists go out there and look at it. And so what's the, what's the, we're saying it doesn't have to be noted, Carol? Well, I think it just, um, you know, identify what the tree is, and because that was going way back to the beginning, all the trees that were sort of the dark green on that map, right. and identify So you're saying it's called out on this? Yeah, on C13, it's, yeah, one, of the, it's one of the four revised plans that we gave to Carolyn. Uh, so it's not of the big ones? No, we added a note on the revised plan. Right. right. You don't have C13? No. Not in the little the ones. We don't have it in the little ones. The little ones you handed out, there's no C13. Interesting. Okay, well. C7, C9, and C16. And C17. Okay, interesting. Yeah. <coughs> um, Alright, so we're going to want that to be noted. tree spade. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's right at the end, and I'll just I'll point it out. I know you can't see it very well, but it's right at the end of the hammerhead. There's a tree. Yeah. The road's coming right up through it. Yeah. And there's there's one near the coach house as well that the sidewalk's going to be going through that. But we're planting some trees in that. And that's that's not a specimen tree though. That's just a, a tree that we're noting to be removed. Are you on C15 by the way? This is this is uh, 13. Right. I have it in my set. So the next condition is the detail for tree planting on C15 does not reflect the city standards for planting. As we have submitted to mass development previously, yeah, the we flare end it. of the trunk should be one and a half inch caliper. We revised that. Yeah, yeah, the, no, it was changed, but the graphic is the same, so the graphic still looks like okay. the tree submerged in the ground. Are okay. you going to be giving, emailing them these things too, Carol? What's that? We have that. Yeah, yeah. We have, yeah, we have those. Missing information. There's no indication in the plans of what the lot layout is, which we've talked about, so we want to see as much lot layout information yeah. on this. Yeah, we'll add something. Uh, as well as the proposed dotted line for the path. Yes. Mm -hmm. Info related to 290.22A E and X is not shown. I don't know what that that's means. The, that's the open space, the cross connection. Oh, okay. You need to show all pedestrian connectivity and it should be constructed as part of the road construction as specified in the special permit for north-south. So we're saying we want to see it this condition means they're going to show it and build it the way well, they're Well, that showing. was what I originally suggested you all. Uh, I mean, I, I think 
um, you know, as long as they, they offered a memorandum um, and, understanding. and a notation on the plan of where it's going to go, and I think part of the condition would be it has to be built at X time right. so that as these projects get going, you know, that... Right. Well, along those lines, I want to see as a condition that that area to the south east corner somehow delineated as protected, preserved, however it has to be, but it's you do never conservation restriction. conservation restriction, something so they can't be built up. Yep. Great. The only reference to lighting is the detail of the light post. Yeah, we have a photometric plan that uh, we're gonna give you. Bring it to the next meeting? Yes. I have or we're, is we're it gonna, just gonna, gonna give it we'll give it to Carolyn prior to the next meeting. Right, but is it is it gonna be for the whole the roadway. Should be matching, just the roadway uh, for matching. Already, just yeah. the additional road. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, what other things did we come up with besides you have the path, open space, are there any other conditions? We're okay with the sidewalk. Well, one item on the path that Carolyn raised in one of her comments was uh, on the east side of Olander yeah. going through the memorial, and that grade does not allow us to build that. Mm -hmm. So we would like your decision that we don't you know, follow, that we can't build it because it's not going to be ADA. There's no way to get it to be ADA, and any construction would occur within the canopy of those beech trees, which has been told to us will affect the health of those beech trees. Uh, that the roots are right up, you know, just below the surface. Mm -hmm. But the grades that come down from Olander down to that path that we are building uh, down in the lower level, uh, the grade is just way too steep to be able to build any path within an ADA standard. I think you all need to look at the overall plan. I mean, again, going back to the master plan, the master plan shows that connection all the way across that area. So, um, you know, I think you should go back and look at um, sort of the bigger, what's going on here with the grades and how far away it is to that other path. And if there's another means to come up and do an S-curve connection or something, um, you know, away from those trees. But again, it's sort of translating from the master plan to the construction plan. Does that mean that you have room to just do a big zigzag north of the beach house? Where? Up here. Uh, there's more beach trees back there. We're showing two, but there's actually four or five. Oh, okay. That was actually designated on one of our master plans as beach tree walk, because there's actually four or five beach trees all in there. And what we're proposing to do is continue. Yeah, what we're it's act there's actually an old driveway for the old hospital right under there, so we would not disturb it, leave it as is. Um, well, I would think that access to the fountain should be It will. The, the fountain will be up at oh, the level okay. of the roadway. So if we had to, we had, we'd fill in an area enough to be able to handle that. Is that a requirement that we can wait? We can't wait ADA compliance. We can't wait. No. Yeah, the memorial would definitely be ADA compliant. Uh, nor north of those two beach trees that are shown on that plan is where we're continuing to show residential lots along that road. And so what we propose is that that north-south uh, pathway that's on the other side of those beach trees would continue all the way up to that second detention pond and tie into the Smith mm -hmm. pathway. So we actually have a, a lot of connectivity. Would it connect down here? Yeah, down, up, down by lot one, it actually comes in off of over here. Okay. So what, I guess, what, what, what are you asking then? Uh, one of Carolyn's comments was to connect the east-west path at the memorial. Mm -hmm. That we not have to do that because it uh, physically cannot cannot be built uh, with ADA requirement under the ADA requirement. So what does that mean? Well, I have to go back and look at that, the master plan and then the special permit requirement because it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly there. I think there was an east-west connector, so if it means that it has to go through one of the planned single-family house lots, then you know, maybe that's where it needs to connect. So do you guys want to take a look at that before we yeah. meet again on the yeah. whatever we continue to? Okay. Any other, were there other conditions? All right, um, should open up to the public. Anybody here from the public would like to speak? Nope. Um, anything else before we pick a time to continue to? Um, so the applicant has said two weeks. Carolyn, is two weeks 
the, we need the plans, though. We can get everything done in a week. If that gives you enough time for a week to redo them. Uh, don't we need two weeks? Yeah, typically you need two. I mean, because if they have a week, then then you get the plans a week ahead of time. So that means that you get the plans, but we wouldn't have time to review them. Right, we wouldn't have time to get the plans for us to review them. For, so, so about nine. I mean, but February 9th, we're at a deficit of board members. So, um, you want to be five or zero on the ninth? Um, no, eight. Um, I mean, I you vote. all can. Doesn't matter. I mean, you only need four. Can't they vote till I vote? <laughs> you only need four for subdivision approval, so right. we could go to the ninth, but that that's the issue. Right. Right. If the land is not available to vote against it anyway, so. We're trying to get your approval so we can go out to bid and, and not miss the construction season as early in the spring, so right builders right. and builders alive. The only thing, and uh, the only other issue is that what if when we do right builders in March, we find something that has to change this? Is there any chance when right builders comes to, the, to, to us that they're going to request something that will somehow have a modification at this point? We're working with them throughout uh, with these plans, right. so I'm going to guess no, but I can't say that. Yeah, I mean, no that's the issue is a sort of came up on Mosher. You know, all the driveways were put out. And right. They don't, they don't really work as well as the applicants want them to. So it's just kind of the nature of the. Right, this is a little simpler than that. So. Mm -hmm. um, so we could say the sixth, if you guys are comfortable with only the five. I'm oh, sorry, the ninth. Yeah. And that would be. Um, Probably eight. eight. Yeah, because we have a subdivision. We have another subdivision that night as well. Yeah. All right, so by the way, I can make a motion to continue to February 9th at 8 o'clock. Carolyn, Mark, second. Any other discussion? Well, before you do that, in the event that I don't know if Kensington will want to continue again because of the we'll do it numbers, around. you might want to do it at 7:30, but knowing that they might just get pushed back, just in case. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that's a friendly amendment to Catherine's motion, and Mark has to re-second. We assume all that just happened. Um, he said it. That's right. So, all right. All in favor? All right. See you guys in the sixth. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Ninth. Ninth. I keep saying the sixth. So we're moving across the street. All right. I'd like to open up a hearing scheduled for 7 p.m. Major site plan review for creation of more than 10 parking spaces and more than one curb cut and construction of 22,800 plus or minus square feet of building at Florence Fields, 157 Spring Street, Florence, map ID. 22B-113. So scheduled for seven o'clock. So we're, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening. I'm Anne Marie Mogio. I'm the director of the city's recreation department. It's very exciting to be here at this um, part of the process of the creation of the Florence Fields. Uh, it's a well-known fact. Um, we've had soccer people in front of you um, in the past that the lack of fields in Northampton is something that we've been dealing with for many years. Um, the demand for athletic field usage is high and clearly unmet at this time. Currently there's over 20 leagues or so, youth and adult leagues in the city, close to 4,000 um, adults and kids playing on those organized teams, and close to 4,000 games and practices on the current city fields um, each year. So there is a lot. And the Recreation Commission has been looking for location for well over 20, 20 years or so for a place to put some multiple um, playing fields at. When the Bean and Ella properties came um, available, the opportunity finally arose for us. In late 2009, the city created the Bean Aller Task Force, which were asked to come up with a usage recommendation for the entire property, which was approximately 180 acres. Um, so it's, it's all those parcels. So, um, the task force recommended various areas for agriculture, and 24 acres, which is here, which we're talking about tonight, was designated for recreation. We are grateful um, to the and thankful for the Community Preservation Committee. Um, the state park grant and city was able to fund allocate the uh, acquisition of all the properties here, and um, and also we were able to create a master plan for the property. Let's see, master plan. We have five, two, three, four, five multi-purpose fields. 
here, um, and two baseball fields, a 90-foot diamond and a 60-foot baseball diamond. The, these are, um, could be soccer, lacrosse, all sorts of um, um, games and things could be on there. There's a, let's see, playground and pavilion area here, parking area over here, parking area here with a concession and restroom building um, on the property. In terms of funding the creation of the fields, CPA money and a state park grant was applied for. And the city CPA meetings, which drew a ton of incredible supporters of the project, um, the CPA recently approved funding of the entire project with up to $1.9 million of CPA money, which was very exciting. We currently have a, a state park grant pending, and which is for $500,000. And if we get that, which should be announced, could be announced any day, then the CPA money would be reduced down um, accordingly to that. So it's a significant amount of money, and we are very happy and extremely thankful that for all the support in the community and from the CPA committee for that. Uh, this is a great location for these fields in town because it is actually the um, geographic center of Northampton. Um, and it's walking distance to Florence Center, which is right up the street here. And it's also easy to bike to. We currently in phase one have a multi-purpose trail that has gone in um, along here that already people are using that walk here, cross over, and are walking up Meadow Street. And their future, our future hope is for a continuation of a sidewalk across the way to up to Florence Center. So it's a project that will benefit generations and hundreds and thousands of adults and kids to come in our town. Good. I'm just going to go very quickly through the criteria to look at. Um, so just very quickly, we're obviously looking at this entire site. The first special our site kind of criteria is you know minimizing detrimental uses. And so we have this entire site being out of property began about 180 acres. We carved off six, six acres for an existing house and four new building lots in places we think fit in the neighborhood and all the rest of the land has been preserved. Um, for the site alone, one of the reasons the site was chosen by the B Hour Task Force is it's not housing above it. So one of the sites we looked at is this field across the river, but it's just below a neighborhood, and since sound goes up, we're in a really noisy place. So even though there are some butters here, there's less sound impacts, and less light impacts, and noise, and traffic, and all that in this area than anywhere else in the other um, the second criteria is the circulation issue. I just want to remind you that um, municipal uses are exempt from off-site mitigation. So we're not required to do anything other than deal with the circulation on the site itself. Um, we've already done, as Anne Marie said, the first part of mitigation is putting a sidewalk along the entire length of the project. Um, and that you know, is on site, so that's something that we're required to do. Um, we put in two of the three crosswalks. So right now there's a crosswalk to Spring Street, there's a crosswalk mid-block on Meadow Street, and next year we're going to last crosswalk in to the center of the community garden. So we're tying this in. One of the reasons that's important is community gardens, we hope, will generate a lot of pedestrian traffic instead of cars. Because they're agriculture, they're exempt, so you're not going to see the project. So we're trying to sort of address some of their traffic as well. As part of this project. Um, and then the last thing, again, off-site mitigation isn't required, but we're having, you know, we're trying to, to minimize car trips to the extent possible. So we're connecting the, the on-site sidewalk all the way to the Mill River and all the way to Court Sally Street. Um, so uh, and this one again, the sidewalk is here already. We're going to be crossing Meadow Street here and the sidewalk all the way to the Mill River. And that will get built. It's not in your plans, but it hasn't been designed yet, but that will get built by the time the fields are operational. Is it coming out of the 1.9? It's coming out of the one, well, it's, we have somebody from CPA already, and then we have a new 1.9, so, and then hopefully there's a park grant. So it's coming out, we, we have one park grant already, we've applied for a second park grant, and we have two CPA, three CPA grants, so it's coming out of one of those. Um, third one's relationship to the environment. Again, the first thing I've already said is, is this project overall is preserving open space forever. We're planting 101 new trees. Um, within the project. So there are four trees that are cut down along the road. Those are being replaced. That's our not in this count. So we're planting a total of 105 trees, of which 101 are new trees, four are replacements. That's on this uh, Florence Fields project. 101 or on the whole, uh, whole project? No, in Florence Fields itself. Yeah. And then there'll be four additional trees along the, the right of way. 
but those were places the trees were cut down. So we're not counting those. The other thing is we're going to put photovoltaic on the roof of the building. Um, and we haven't figured out the exact size, but the goal is to make the entire field net zero energy. So we'll figure out how, what's the expected energy load, which is most electricity, because there's no heat, obviously. So what's the expected electricity load for the bathroom, the concession, um, pumps that we need, um, and <coughs> the system that generates that much. So that but the fields aren't going to be lit. The fields are not going to be lit. It'll be a wall pack on the building itself. Um, drainage, uh, Carlos from Berkshire has been talking about this in a little while, but the drainage is basically low impact development. We've now received a stormwater permit from DPW and just this evening a wetlands permit. Um, and this system doesn't have a single pipe in it. So it's truly, you know, what we always say we're looking for low impact development, lots of low velocity swales, so we get as much cleaning as possible. No pipes are going to irrigate the field. Well, I'm sorry, no pipes in terms of dealing with stormwater. Oh, okay. It will be irrigation. And Carlos will go through that in more detail. We've also designed this parking enough to be what we think is day to day load, and that's normal asphalt. And then there's some overflow parking, and that's going to be pervious payment. And, and Carlos can talk about that again as well. Um, impact on city services. Um, we did look at, we are irrigating the field, and, we, and obviously irrigation uses a lot of water. But we actually think this is a good thing environmentally overall, because if we don't irrigate the field, you need a lot more fields, because the fields really get beaten up. And so it just consumes a lot more land. We'll be competing with farmland more often. So irrigated fields you know, can't survive longer. This site actually has some field rotation as well. So the fields will both be irrigated, and there'll be some moving fields around each year. Who asked that? Why not draw water from the Mill River for irrigation? From a permitting standpoint, that's next to impossible. So we couldn't get a permit to do that. We are planning to drill wells. Um, I'm saying if feasible, because you know we would be doing an exploratory well and fair and find what we, we find. But assuming we can, we'll be doing well. So the bathrooms, the potable water will be city water, but the irrigation will be on site water. Are any other city fields irrigated at the moment? Yes. Which one? Um, Ellerbrook, Arcane, Arcanum, Smith, Mainsfield, um, Mainsfield Smith Vocational, and Hamp High. And they're, they're Irrigated with city water? Okay. Yes. Irrigated. I'm not sure about the high school. I'm assuming it is, but. Do we have any fields that are irrigated off of wells? Not that I know of. So if you drill and don't find what you're hoping to find, what's plan B for irrigation? Well, there's three plans. One is we, what we hope we find is we drill wells and we have high enough yield that we can serve the entire system. Mm -hmm. um, plan C is using city water, which we really don't want to do. Plan B is we drill lower yield wells, and then the pumps have to pump all night long, and are filling a storage tank. Storage tanks aren't great giving us a floodplain, and they can pop. You know, so that's one of the things we need to do. <coughs> Anne Marie and I met with a consultant. We're committed to going to the next stage of exploratory wells and figuring out what's there. When the city declares a uh, water emergency, which they seem to do for six months of the year, recreation is exempt. The idea being is if you lose the field, it takes so long to rebuild they can still water. But that's one of the benefits of using the wells is we can irrigate and not be taking city water. But right now, you know, when they're pumping all those fields that Henry mentioned, they can't do that either. So would the solar power um, be enough to especially to run these pumps? Yes. So we're gonna, we're gonna figure out the total electric usage and size of right now. Again, I wanna be careful that the, the term is net zero. So what that means is when the sun's shining, the meter's running backwards. If it's, the sun's not shining, you'd be drawing electricity. Like overall, it should be nice. Yeah. What about like no flush urinals in the bathrooms? I haven't gotten to that level of stuff. You look at, you know, it's probably, you're looking at the amount of water going in irrigation, the reality is that's a tiny bit of water in there. Well, I just know that um, Williston, the, the, the public bathrooms they have at their fields, they're all no flush. Um, you know, it's like 40,000 gallons a year or something like that per but uh, It's sort of looking, we, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. Right. Uh, and then lighting, what I said before, is there'd be wall packs in the building um, that are 100 watt bulbs, but you know, beyond that, there's no lighting on the site. There's no longer no lighting. Um, and that's my quick and dirty. And Juliet, we'll talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Carlos, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Wait, just yeah. one question about the, the parking lot on the, the right. Is that also going to be used for the, the farm? The, the, no. So it's none of the people. Wait, I'm sorry. Hey, the parking lot. 
the, um, the farmers want to access through here so they can drive through to get to their fields. Um, and recreation can do whatever policies that they want. So they may say it's up to them that we have an X period where it's low, there's not much usage, and they allow people using community gardens to park. But there's no commitment to doing that. Okay, so if, I, if you are going to the community gardens, you're not supposed to park in these lots. Right. That's correct. Where are they, that's a, are we going to see a plan at some point for those gardens? They're exempt as agriculture is. Oh, but, but people have to still park somewhere. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing a parking area there. Oh, they are. They're going to put, but we won't, we, we won't see those plans at all? You won't see it as long as the community gardens. They've talked about someday having a community collection point. Yep. If they ever did something that's not exempt as agriculture, that would have to come before you. But as long as it's agriculture, you're not going to see them. If they run two curb cuts, that would come before you. How many parking? Spaces. I'm going to let Carlos answer the details, but he knows that they have Did you say that park line is, is the main access to the agricultural area? Mm -hmm. the no, line? the main access, we share easement. They have an easement across here, and then a road comes back here. So we assume that's the main access. Um, we know if they ever needed a combine or a big machine, they'd have to come this way. Then maybe times it's worth doing. But this is certainly planning to be the main access. Is it going to, is, is, I'm not sure if this will be Carlos yeah. question, but will there be gates or you can't just, you know, take a car and just drive through that parking lot and start joyriding? The so this will have a gate, yeah. and we're presumably double lock it, so we're a lock and, and grow food in Hampton Royal. Yeah. This will have a gate, but it will be open all summer, but we will lock it during the winter. Yeah. Um, this will probably not have a gate in case people want to ski, so this will be open. If there's a problem, no, I mean the road towards the, 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 the north end. Would, would you be able to pick? This will be gated. There's It'll a gate. The one on the left. Um, there that's really going to be up to them. They have the right to do it. So they have a very thin sliver of property which comes in here, yeah. and then there's an easement here. They may or may not choose to gate that. That's going to be their call. Okay. Can we look at the overall plan again that shows how the... Back up one. Or I guess the Yeah. This no, one? Yeah. That's it, yeah. So again, in terms of height, this area is higher. And this area is higher, so we're trying to stay away from that. Okay. So the community gardens aren't accessed to. Community gardens planted at their entrance somewhere over here. Is that Meadow Street? This is Meadow Street. At one point, they're going to line up opposite our driveway. Okay. They're allowed to either op be opposite or at least 100 feet. 50. So I'm not sure where they are right now. I think they're planning to, to be offset and be over here somewhere. And the access, so the, the, the sole access to the, the park to the north, which is Grow Food Northampton. APR 104A. So they have an access point here. That's the only access point that. that there, this one's for a park. Except that, but there's nothing farther up off. Yeah. No, well, they own this as well. There is current. The current setup is there's a 99 year lease for a farmer here, yeah. and so I don't know if they have any rights to go here. So it's all owned by Grow Food Northampton, but this is one CSA. This would be a separate CSA, and as far as I know, they didn't reserve the right to come in here. But I don't know that for sure. How many people are going to be accessing growth through their It's not like the community garden. Well, it really depends on the model. I mean, the, the you know, there's a CSA here right now, and frankly, I own a share, so I'm totally from my standpoint. When you go and pick up a share, there's a fair number of people there. I don't know if the total buying. How do you get in there? Pick up your share. They have a barn here, so I drive in their driveway and I oh. go to their barn here. I don't know what the. I mean, this is too low, so they couldn't build a building here. They can't do shares here. Mm -hmm. So I know at one point they talked about possibly doing something here. At one point they thought this might be a different model. I just don't know where they're thinking is on it. But I know that we would not allow access through here for people picking up shares. That's a really high volume. We're talking about just farm vehicles going through. Right. Anything else on that one? Laser and advanced. So, I, um, first of all, my name is Carlos Nieto. I'm a landscape architect with the Berkshire Design Group. I've been working on the project since uh, we were doing the master planning for this, and it's, it's been a, uh, a great project that I've been kind of looking from the beginning to the end. I hope we look uh, to get a permit for it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, and I think Anne Marie and, and Wayne have described it pretty, pretty well, but I wanted to uh, give a little bit of sense of what's going on within the park. Um, we, have, we do have those two uh, parking spaces. The parking space on the right, uh, the longer one, is there's 78 spaces, uh, paved spaces. We're providing also basically the same amount of spaces as 
a uh, non paved uh, with a uh, grass um, paver, uh, a paver that lets grass go through it um, in basically alternate areas. So you'll have paved and unpaved, paved and unpaved. Uh, the idea is to, um, even though we have this extensive parking spaces, we still have these uh, green areas within the parking space. Um, the other parking space we're seeing is 68 spaces. It's all, this one's all paved uh, with uh, this concrete, and that will serve, as Anne Marie mentioned, it will serve the two baseball fields and also the restroom and concession area. Um, uh, the circulation within uh, the site, as, as we also mentioned, this we're looking at phase two. Phase one was the original phase, which included, included uh, the uh, multi-use uh, multi trail that we see here. So to the south, that's going to be part of our circulation system for the park. We also have a walkway, basically, that goes all the way around the park. So there'll be circulation and there'll be opportunities for people to actually do exercise around the fields and not just use the fields uh, for sports, but also for other types of recreation within the site. Um, as uh, Wayne also mentioned, we, you know, we've uh, included an extensive amount of, of trees, but at the same time, we've left some areas, um, especially working with uh, some of our neighbors, to uh, provide those views into the fields that, that uh, is what people love about this, this space, is uh, that you have this, uh, very expansive views into the agricultural fields. So we are trying to uh, still maintain that view from, from the abutters. Um, and also from the road, and then the, one of the reasons I, I think this was an ideal use for the site is we are still, it's a very low impact in the sense of views, because if it's a sports field, right now it's an agricultural field, and it'll be basically the same thing that you see now. It's going to be a flat area where you can actually enjoy the view into the mountains, or into the hills uh, on the other side. Um, in addition to, um, so we, uh, we touched on parking, and we talked talk about circulation, we talked about five, we have five multi-use fields. One of the... Um, reasons why we have five and also we have these other overlay fields. As Wayne mentioned, uh, it allows rotation of the field, so it actually allows a better use of the fields and less impact on the, um, on the surface of the fields and it allows a park and rec to still uh, be, uh, be using the site even when, it's, uh, when you're leaving some of the fields uh, to rest. Um, so they'll have plenty of space for that. Um, no, uh, we are including a rotational system, as we say, and no lighting for the actual uh, art um, itself, except for the uh, wall pack. Um, we, I wanted to touch on this because we, it was one of the comments that uh, came out, um, but it, this is a clear view, I guess, of the uh, floodplain in the site. The area, the darker hatched area is a 10-year floodplain. And the darker and the lighter uh, hatched area is the 100 year floodplain. What we're seeing with this image is basically the whole park is within the 100 year floodplain. Um, and it was one of the comments in, 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 uh, in, in that, that it wasn't very clear on the survey, but it, it, this is how, how it basically plays out uh, in regards to uh, floodplain. Um, one of the main uh, main, uh, the most amount of work that, that came out of the design of this field is actually the drainage system for the, whole, for, for the park. And um, we've, this is a, a quick diagram showing basically the, the drainage situation, so existing conditions. We have uh, the Mill River that runs to the east of the, of the, uh, park, of the uh, park. This is the line of the property line, the 24 acres see here. And what we're showing in this image is that there is a large amount of drainage that actually moves across these fields and kind of gets concentrated into this area. Um, and that there is a existing stone, um, improvised stone dike. Well, what I mean by improvised is that the farm work has pushed uh, in the last 10 years probably uh, rocks and, and soil into this edge, so it's prevented the natural drainage of the site to go into the Mill River. And right now, what happens is that you get a certain amount of, of ponding in in the area that's uh, within this polygon you see here, and um, and it will flood up to a certain point, and eventually it will actually drain out into the road and to uh, into the Mill River through the road through the bridge. Um, and that was kind of a, one of the uh, 
issues that we have to approach when we're doing the design, how do we approach, how could we approach the drainage for the site. Um, and we looked at different scenarios, one of them being actually using the uh, existing storm drain system on the road. Uh, but uh, when we went to DPW to look at that uh, scenario, the existing uh, drain system is, uh, is maxed out at the moment, so we couldn't actually access um, the city drainage system as our overflow. Um, so the second scenario we saw was, okay, we could, we could have a low area in the middle here, and then we can have a pipe, and we can pipe it all the way to, um, to the river where, we, where it wants to go, where the water should be going. Um, and that uh, in, pr uh, created a certain number of other problems, one of them being that the cost of, of, of laying all these pipes would have been uh, very high. And secondly, as we would, um, if we were going to pipe any of this water here, we would be actually impacting more of the uh, riverfront area and the river. Um, because we would have to bring this basically a pipe that would bring all the water from the whole site into one certain spot. Uh, so our approach for drainage was actually to sheet flow the whole site, which meant um, with a very uh, slight slopes, we are draining all our site towards a, a low point in this area, and then the rest of it will go into a low point right next to the parking lot. Also, the parking lot will be, will be draining there. That has uh, certain advantages. First of all, we've eliminated most of the, or all of the piping that we would have to need for a drainage system. So as you can see, there's no catch basins on our parking lots. Everything will actually sheet flow into these uh, uh, infiltration uh, swales and, and basins. Um, and the other thing that we achieve by doing this is uh, providing or uh, helping the uh, natural drainage pattern that existed in this site before and, and trying to <coughs> use that as part of our drainage. Also, it, has, it helps relieve some of the ponding that exists right now in the fields um, on to the, to the north end in this area, right here. So is it, it, none yeah. of it's going to drain into the street? Originally, what happens now in current conditions is that this whole thing floods, eventually get, it reaches a certain elevation and it goes to the street. Right. What we're avoiding is basically that. We're avoiding throwing all this water into the street and not actually taking care of it and, and putting it through any, uh, um, it, it not doing any cleansing on the water and actually bringing it back um, through a vegetated swale into another vegetated swale. This whole area will be sheet flowing through grass, so all, all our particulates will be uh, dropped there, and then having an overflow, which means we're not talking about having flows through this area all the time, we're talking about in a very major storm when these get totally full, eventually water will go that way instead of going into the fields or going into the road. Are you taking down that <clears throat> naturally constructed wall that you were just going? Well, it's in, in when it's not natural, but yeah, we would be breaching that area of kind of uh, that dike that's being uh, developed by basically the farm farmers pushing soil and also the potato farmers in the last couple of years bringing a lot of stone uh, coming out of just basically dropping them there. But yes, we would be breaching that uh, that uh, virtual dike. I just want to clarify one thing. In terms of water going to the street, what we're talking about is in normal conditions. In flood conditions, it's all going right. to... Well, I was also thinking that the property on the right, nothing's going to end up going onto that property. Yeah, well, but that was one major, also one of the major uh, requirements that we had was trying to avoid, you know, putting in water there. Yeah. And what we've done is actually we've... we. We, by creating this uh, virtual low spot point here, we're actually bringing some of the water that, that if it were ever to really flood, it would go in here. But like Wayne said, I want to go back and to this image. Um, this is the 10-year flood, and this is the 100-year flood. When you get a 10-year uh, flood event, it will flood. Um, there will be water in this area, uh, no matter how, what the drainage system actually does. Question: Does the does the the drainage that you have in any way work against what you would ideally want uh, as far as drainage on the fields or the crowning of the fields or the layout and so forth? 
No, not not at all. I mean, that was one of the, again, we had a certain amount of uh, kind of constraints, and one of the constraints is we need the the main the main uh, objective is to drain these fields and make them work correctly. So what we are showing right now would drain the fields correctly. Um, the other approaches would have been, in a way, like having a pipe and going to DPW, having a bowl overflow there, it would have been easier uh, in the sense that it's easy to put all the water into a pipe and just send it there. And, and design-wise, it would have been easy to just carve out a, a low point and not have to deal with uh, more uh, precise grading or grading that's, that makes this uh, drainage system not need any structures. Um, yeah. Was there the, um I, I think this is pretty precise grading <laughs> yeah. to work. Um, was, are there conditions in the stormwater permit I didn't read through relative to as built to make sure the grading happens the way it's designed or in the Conservation Commission permit? No, but the maintenance of, uh, n n n no, it's for the as built, uh, but there's an operations and maintenance plans for the structures, the structure that we're actually including here, so that there would be guarantee of of maintenance of the outlet that we would be putting here. But, but for construction, yeah. DPA, we did ask for spot grades. Okay. Because these are general one for contours. Yeah. They want more detailed topography so that when Carlos is making sure the contract is doing it right. Exactly. I, I, so I, I, during construction, you need to send the spot grade to DPW. Is that what you're saying? No, before actually, before construction, DPW, one of the, one of the comments that DPW had was to include more detail on, the, on, on spot grades. So, uh, my, uh, uh, my my response to that is yes. We'll provide more spot grades as a revised drawing, okay. as a part of the condition that, that you you can put a condition on, on having that plan with more spot grades. And 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 their concern was it is a slight changes of elevation uh, within the whole site. Actually, from one corner to the other is about 0.4 percent slope um, as existing. So. As we were grading this, they're very concerned of, you know, six inches could make a big difference. Um, and the main concern was right here on the road, because existing drainage goes into the road, and there will be, uh, the, the spot grades will be there to, to make that work. We don't for, it, the way it is right now, they just need more detail so that when the contractor comes in, knows precisely what they have to do. But there was a request that after construction, you show a plan and they were built. They were built mm -hmm. as designed. No. 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 Do you want that as a condition? I mean, I don't know. It might be worth thinking about just uh, um, throwing that out there as an option because it seems like, I mean, I think the system is, um, it's great is what we want to see in terms of, you know, no pipes and all of that, but construction projects over We've seen over and over again the contractor gets in. I mean, actually, we're still dealing with it. I think at Barrett Hill, I don't think it's been resolved where the soccer fields weren't graded correctly. There was wrong soils, and so you know the design is good, but then the contractor doesn't always stick to the design. Is that soccer field been rebuilt yet? They're working on it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's grown in yet. Is it it's some grown? grass? Yeah. <laughs> But it's been a long time. You know, it's been done six years. Carlos, I'm not sure if this is for you or Wayne. I think Wayne mentioned that there's overflow parking. Does that go into what we're calling overflow parking? Is those grass uh, paved areas that are right. right there? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
recreation astronaut parking is moderate the first year. We sort of have a problem with people parking on Meadow Street. Mm -hmm. We'd probably go to city council and ask for no parking work. No, no, but if, no. In the, if, if the, right across the street, there's a parking lot for community gardens. Oh, I see what you're people, you know, there's a tournament. The, the, the field side is full. They're going to just go over and park. In, in, yeah, and one of the things I don't if, uh, understand, but we are providing about, you know, we got about 160 parking spaces with overflow on one side and then an extra 70 on the other side. Um, and a huge event, I mean, I, we can ask Emery, but I think that will be sufficient parking spaces uh, for a big, even a big event that, that we'd be playing here. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, go ahead. Just on, on the drainage, did I read somewhere there's an existing drainage structure somewhere in the playing area? Well, what there is is actually, there is a, uh, a sewer line, major sewer line that goes actually right, right through the fields and there is an easement, the DPW has an easement there. What he was mentioning on the comments is that there is a catch bait, um, uh, manhole right here. Mm -hmm. And the response for that, we would actually bring, bring that down so that it will not be in the playing field, of course, because of security purposes. And then we could, there are several ways we could approach that location. You know, we could do uh, three points that we could provide with a plan or a sketch that we could give to DPW so they could uh, triangulate. Yeah. Or even we could have a rubber marker or some other type of uh, non uh, hard surface marker that we could have in there. Um, we we don't see it as a that, that's a as a major problem. Really. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think Wayne's in one of these. He said was you know, it's going to be gated. The whole lot's going to be gated in the winter. There's no snow plowing issues or anything like that. No, no yeah. It'll be gated. Right <coughs> there's two there, there's two proposed bollards right at the edge on the car cut, and it will be gated on the other side. Yeah. What about um, dumpster? We don't have a dumpster. Yeah. You have a concession stand and 200 cars and lots of people working with their trash. Uh, in in uh, we should provide a dumpster or some type of uh, other uh, other uh, trash receptacles. I think. Yes. Yeah. In this case, I mean trash receptacles. If, I mean, I would need this for Wayne just for the logistics of. We have. Uh, I mean, one of the larger fields would be Sheldon Field, and there's trash receptacles around um, the fields. You know, and, oh, right. but, but if we do the concession stand, it will have utility rooms and doors. Mm -hmm. Presumably, just keep trash in a barrel. I don't. I, I, I don't know what a concession stand. I mean, you could be serving ice cream, soda, and hot dogs, or I don't know. Okay. You just you have two hundred people. Yeah. I mean, where are you we have we have concession at Arcanum. I mean, there's only two fields there, but oh, okay. and we have some of those um big belly compactor trash um at some of the. Some of the fields, some of the places that you know compacts the trash as people put it in there. And the DPW picks up um, trash and does does that at, and recycles. There's recycle bins and trash bins at all the fields. We're actually like say you have a three-day yeah. tournament Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You oh, yeah. got a couple thousand people going through it. Where are you going to put all a couple thousand people's worth of trash? Could require who's ever running the tournament to to bring some kind of uh, trash receptacles. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what people think. I mean, it seems like. I think you need somewhere to put the trash. You got a lot of people coming in there. You've got the playground. You need at least a trash can. You need something. Can like, something. It could be right next to the, you know, next to the concessions near something. The closed area where you can keep hundreds of people of trash for three days. I mean, I, I can see um, definitely uh, uh, the availability of trash receptacles, smaller trash receptacles throughout the site, and then having a some area that that's. Or well, storing well, a larger amount of trash. Uh, is the concession stand going to be open with the with the initial build out this time, or is that something down the road? I think it's. Yeah. We're hoping to have it in the yeah. initial. But it depends. Uh, yeah. Depends, depends on how where the bids all come in. in, in the well, so does the if, if they're going to sell food, who who permits them to sell food there? Uh, the Recreation Commission and the Board of Health. And so I imagine if you have a. Something functioning as a restaurant, you got so Board of Health has certain requirements of, with, with. Well, yeah, I know. So, that's kind of what I'm wondering. If on your plan, yeah. you should show somewhere to put your restaurant's trash. Yeah, I'm the. Or even, I mean, I think it. The, the building is. Five fields, so I think it lends itself to, <laughs> you know, jamborees or big functions where you have a lot of kids or two day yeah. tournaments or whatever. Exactly. In concession stand alone, they're going to generate debris, so it seems like, it seems logical that you need somewhere. Put that stuff maybe not a big dumpster but an enclosed mm -hmm. something somewhere 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, enclosed area next to the concession, something. The building will have, the concession is also bathrooms and utility rooms and things, so it would seem pretty reasonable and easy to put something in there, you know, have an area in there. Yeah, but uh, to, August day, you want all your trash inside your, your restaurant? Mm -hmm. I, I, like what I guess what I'm looking for, I'm yeah, where, it, where you put the trash. Yeah, is it some <laughs> kind of like little, the, could it just a gated a or a little fenced in structure somewhere? Could be right, somewhere. right in the back of the building, you know. Yeah, or, yeah. Something, something. yeah just a fenced around area. That's what we usually say, put a fenced in area next to the thing to hold the trash. And I think, uh, you know, the suggestion of having it around the building is great, and I think that's where it should be. Yeah. Um, we could, uh, in our revised plan, we could have a smaller pad, concrete pad there. Um, provide uh, some fencing around it for right. for that, exactly. and then for the rest of the fields, of course, there will be right. just You're movable, have, yeah, movable right. cans that you can actually move exactly. around. Yeah. Are there, is there a place for bike racks? There could be a lot of bikes. Yeah. We are foreseeing, yes, yeah, so a bike rack or bike rack area right close to the concession. You got to show on the plan some kind of like I, I would imagine you're going to want to have okay 24, I don't know, loop, something like that. You're going to want to show on the plans. Okay, mm -hmm. bike racks. So I'm not sure if you would like to call us. Yeah. So and there were questions on what the uh, in the drainage system, uh, the bottom of uh, of this very shallow swale is going to be armored to prevent erosion. And uh, the what we are going to be using is this um, open cell system, which is basically a concrete uh, paver that has voids and in, in, in a point of in between each one of these, and what this provides is rapid uh, vegetation of, of, of the armor. Um, and what you're seeing here is basically a progression of you know recently installed, and as it starts to vegetate, as it, it's kind of midway, and once it's totally vegetated. I mean, this is not the use up that we're going to be using for this. In this case, they're armoring uh, some channels, but it's the same, basically the same product, and it will be looking the same way that you see here, so it will be totally vegetated. And what I'm trying to go back, what I'm referring to, is the bottom of this area, not the whole entirety of the grading area, but just the bottom of this area right here, um, to prevent all prevent erosion and, uh, and also to have vegetation there. Um, and the last thing we I wanted to touch was the uh, flood storage calculations that were done, and we are actually increasing the uh, amount of storage, of flood storage on the site, and we are increasing it as a total and also increasing it in a foot-by-foot -foot basis, which is one of the requirements that uh, we, we needed to achieve. Um, what you're seeing on the top here is the, the methodology that we use. We use the computer modeling, we uh, CAD and through, uh, Civil 3D, uh, and we calculated the amount of cuts and fill in, in uh, existing storage and proposed storage conditions. And that's what we, basically what you're seeing here are the calculations that came out of the, this study. And again, uh, by regulations, we need to at least be net zero in, in flood, flood storage. We don't want to decrease flood storage. But in our case, actually, we increase flood storage by, uh, by our grade. At this point, if you have any other questions for me, um, if not, I'll, I'll uh, give it uh, to the traffic engineers. Any other questions? I just was wondering about the, the nature of the trees. Are there certain selections, certain kinds of trees? Yes. Those are going to be well, the trees, native. Yes, most, most of them are native. Um, and for instance, in the area where we're going to have plenty of water that's going to be accumulated, we use, we, we Specify uh, native trees that, are, that can withstand like wet feet, uh, tupelos, uh, even red maples that are you know trees that are, will survive in areas that are a little bit that are wetter. Um, that was the, the, the idea. Also, we use some great trees or bigger trees like pin oaks and trees that are uh, again natives, but they're tall and big and great because it's, you have the space to do it. Especially these uh, the trees that you, you see on the top. It's also red oaks and uh, some other great trees, big trees that you can. Because we have the space here. Do we actually have a, a plant list anywhere? Yes, it should be in the. That's what we're just looking for. 
in the planting plant. Oh, layout plant. Yeah, they're all. It's all combined in, in the layout plan. It'll be. There should be two tables. At least one on the first page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Or, uh, the walkway. Yes. Does it, does it go all the way around the field, or does it stop in the top left? What we do, what we are we are proposing, we we would uh, to come down. We would be using, or we we would end it at right at the uh, right of way for the farm. Meaning that the farm road, you would basically double use the farm road also to walk around to be able to walk all the way around. And the reason for this is that we, this is the area of the, the site that is the tightest we, we could, and we have basically no space to actually bring in a walkway and at the same time uh, keep our uh, fence line for our fields and also have a the uh, access for the farm road on the on, on the other edge. Also, it's I. We thought it was a good opportunity to just you re, you know multi-use that that access that we already have there. How wide is that? Right now, with this, there's a 20, 20 foot easement there. Why easement? And th is that the dirt farm on the yes? Down? And so it stays dirt. Yeah. Well, it it, it stays whatever growth foot Northampton wants to wants to leave at. Yeah. It's not part of the project. Um, the that dirt farm road. Does that promote a conflict, you know, with vehicles? I don't know how much traffic that you're going to get there, but okay. if, you're, if you're promoting walking around, mm -hmm. dumping everybody out into a, a road, dirt road or otherwise. Yes, I mean, I believe the road is not going to be. It's not. It's not a public road. It's not a road that people. I mean, meaning it's not going to be a traffic road that's going to be a lot of people are going to be there. So, it's going to be used for farm equipment. It might. It's not going to be used const, const, constantly. Um, that's and there is. It's wide enough, and I mean, you're seeing a line between. Right, what's the What's the width of it? Well, from here to here, there is 20 feet. Um, so you can move, yeah, you can move around. Also, you could, you know, you could go to the edge of the lawn, which is within our site too, if you needed to get kind of get out of the way. It's not like a, like a high traffic road that you would 